Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Jaeger262, and I am doing the Azure Land video I promised. Now this is the main port for the app, as you can see here, this is the Kazuna AI Destroyer from the last event. I have her as my quote-unquote secretary. Basically what that is, is you pick one ship that stays here up front on the home screen or the port screen all the time. You can change them out however you want to. Usually it's your default ship that you start with and then you can change it from there. Yeah, and so every few seconds they'll say some kind of character line or just little quips based on who they are to kind of reinforce the idea that their ships are actually all people. So some basics here, the dock is where you'll see all the ships listed here by level, which is the number in the top level, 48, 49, so on. Now all the different colors stand for rarity, which you can see by the stars, or gold, gold being super rare and up, purple being elite and up, and then gray just being normal, that sort of thing. And when I say end up, is because you can limit break them, so as you see I have my Saratoga here with three stars, because I limit broke her, and basically what that means is I found another Saratoga, and so she is now worth more in value, but that doesn't actually change her status as an elite ship. So that stays the same, but I'll get into that more when I get into how to upgrade these ships. How you collect these ships is in the build tab here orders and so every event right now we're doing the Bismarck event which I'm super excited for and I hope you get that I hope to get Bismarck. You go through orders and you hit launch and hopefully there we go. Alright, common battleship Nevada. The way you do this is by using wisdom cubes you see at the top I have 90. Those are the currency for building ships and part of the new update you actually have a wishing well where you can make a wish for a particular battleship or cruiser or aircraft carrier that you want. Just pick the type. So say I want to do a submarine or aircraft carrier and then you can actually pick from this list which ones you want to show up more. Now it doesn't just give you them, but it does increase your chances of getting them. Here in headquarters, you will find two things. One will be the academy, which is the little port area which you see behind Kazuna on the loading screen there. And here is where you're going to collect money, oil, and skill training for your ships, as well as a metal room which shows you achievements you've completed, and a lecture hall which I've not unlocked yet because I'm not a high enough rank. And it's kind of the hometown for where the ships live, which is fun. The other thing you'll see here is the dorm. So as you can see there, I have two submarines in there right now. This dorm is a room you design on your own, just buying little tiny trinkets and things from the shop here. And it gives you different kind of cosmetic furniture, uh, wallpapers, little things like statues to use. And they're running this, what I'm showing you right now is the new Bismarck collection, obviously for the event. Anyway, the reason I like the dorm, if I could just stop touching them, is that you put two ships in here at a time and they gain passive XP. And this bar you see down in the bottom left corner here, supplies, is actually things that they're going to get through XP. So you click that, it shows you that I have eight hours before all this runs out. So they'll be gaining XP over the course of those eight hours. So far, both ships have received 803 XP just from sitting in the dorm doing nothing so it's kind of a cute little aspect of the app because if you enjoy designing rooms or having some kind of cute personal aspect to a game which I do you can do that here and it actually does help your ship rank up now the most important part of the game would be the battles and right now I am playing the Bismarck event you that music there and I wanted to show you not only what the combat in this game is like, but how to sort of play. And so right now, as you can see here in the bottom right, that level 35 monster looking thing is the boss for this level. And my fleet is the one marked with green arrow. I have a second fleet here with HMS Hood, and then a submarine fleet here. So let's get into a battle. This 
game is actually really fun as an app. It's kind of easy going. And you'll see what I mean by that. It's like an arcade sort of feeling. So essentially you move around with this joystick that you see to the bottom left. And while you're fighting these other enemy ships, you'll see here I have three abilities saved up. Now I won't be able to use the battleship ability the one to the furthest right. That's because I have no battleships. Now these abilities are actually only able to be used by the Vanguard fleet, which is in the very back, which consists of, for this particular fleet, three aircraft carriers. Alright, this is the boss. The Suffolk and Norfolk cruisers. And so yeah, every time I launch an airstrike, or any kind of rear guard defense, you will actually get to see the ships themselves that come onto the screen like you just saw and will conduct an attack. So that was actually really easy to do thanks to those three aircraft carriers. So every time you win, you'll get an S rating, which is perfect, and basically that's just if you won, you didn't lose any ships, and you did it all in two minutes or less. And this is what you get. You have the ability to find unique ships. I have not found any unique event ships yet, but I'm hoping to. I did find some unique gear here, and I got 90. Battle, the MVP, which is Saratoga here, will say their catchphrase. You can go in here and kind of see just how much damage they did, what they did over the course of the battle, and how much experience they made. And that's pretty much it. I have now cleared that whole sector, and I can move on to the second, which I have not yet done. Now for every event mode you have an extremely hard mode, which I can't do because I haven't completed the stage yet, and a hard mode. Now I wouldn't venture to do that because none of my ships are big enough. This is what the normal campaign looks like. This is just obviously immediately a lot less intense than the Bismarck side. And it follows the real events of... World War II. So it starts with naval exercises that give you a little story into Pearl Harbor, what they call Pearl's Tears here. And from there you do all the missions that were laid to the breakout of World War II and naval action. And then you have these based on Coral Sea battles, and then each little thing gets its own historical marker, like rescuing Yorktown. That's obviously based off of the actual sinking of the Yorktown in 1940. Two, I believe. I'll have to double check that. But my point is, the campaign follows the actual historical battles of the Pacific Theater between the Japanese and American naval fleets. Now, some things to note on this screen before I go back is you have here in the bottom right three missions. Now, commissions are basically passive events or battles, rather, that you can send up to six ships to go and fight over the course of an hour, two hours, or this one at the very top, which is what I'm running, which is nine hours. And what that means is, after nine hours, they will all gain 12,000 XP. And so you can do that, especially for ships you're not currently playing with, or that are not currently in formation, to rank them up even faster than just using the dorm. And... Right, what I just mentioned was formations. That is where you'll be using to fight every battle will be based on the ships you have here. So you get up to three formations. This is the first one with three aircraft carriers, Zeppelin, uh, the Graf Zeppelin, the Akagi, and the Saratoga. And then here I have the HMS Hood in the middle, all by the Soryu and the Hiru aircraft carriers. And then three submarines. But one of them is actually in a commission right now, so she is not here. But I have an American submarine, a Japanese submarine, and a German U-boat, so that's all really cool. Lab is a new feature, but I still don't really know what it does. Essentially, you run special missions to get elite ships from history, like the St. Louis, the Monarch, the Rune, and so on. I haven't actually done anything with that yet, because it does cost a lot of resources to do. But if you have a lot, you do play this game. That might be something to check out. Let's see. Right, so for every event, depending on what you do, you'll get these little points. 
for every coin I get, I lead up a level. And for this one, it's actually going to be the main prize is a new skin for the U556, I believe. Yeah, the U556. And then at the bottom here, you'll see all your missions right now. This was a mission done for skins. You just basically colored pictures in after using oil. And you got the special skin for the Akashi. I actually don't own the Akashi Destroyer, so it was kind of useless, but it was fun. And then for every event outside of that, you also get this, which is what I am doing the missions for. The special missions, you get coins. All the coins are able to be exchanged for something. And right now, I'm hoping to get the King George, which is the big prize for 8,000 coins. And I think that's it. <laughs> Science rules, another one. One small promise is a new submarine mission for the KMS U556. I don't have that submarine, I'm trying to get it. Hopefully I'll unlock it again. Like I said the other day, all ships that you get are at random. You're able to build them and choose what, what ship they are, what type I should say. So I'm basically just doing the event limited ones right now. But if there was no event, you can go light which covers light destroyers, cruisers, carriers, repair ships, and more. And then heavy, which are cruisers, monitors, battle cruisers, battleships. And then special, which are submarines, light carriers, aircraft carriers, and repair ships. And so there's a lot of overlap between the categories, just to keep it more random. Anyway, that's the essentials of Azura Lane. And you get to see kind of how the battle is. It's a cool little arcade game. I really enjoy it. I might do more videos depending on if you guys like this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to get notified over the course of the next few videos I'll be doing for the Bismarck event in both World of Warships, Azur Lane, or the D-Day event, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. The support is always appreciated. And like always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.